Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. Natural disasters are tragic events that can level towns, destroy homes, and even take lives. But even after the storm blows over, the fire dies down, or the earth stands still again, health and safety concerns remain. Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. I'm your host, Lisa Sather. Today we talk about how natural disasters can impact your health in ways you may not know, and how you can prepare to help lessen their impact. Stay with us. Welcome back. Whether we're talking about wildfires, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, or even volcanoes, natural disasters and severe weather can take toll on people's livelihoods. But the aftermath of these events can also take a toll on people's health. Joining us this morning is Matt Matlich with the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Program and Dr. Greg Holzman, the Montana Public Health State Medical Officer. Thanks for being here today, gentlemen. Thank you. Matt, let's start out with you and, and let's talk a little bit about your position title, what all that entails, and maybe then you can um, give us a little bit more information too about how you help coordinate with the local, state, and federal levels with your position as well. Of course. So my, uh, my position is a public health emergency manager, and, uh, and I work for the Department of Public Health here in Montana. And um, that kind of fits in in a few different ways uh, with uh, preparedness. And so um, in the public health sector, we prepare for, uh, we prepare for um, influenza outbreaks, we prepare for um, you know, other communicable disease outbreaks, and we um, work with epidemiologists and uh, immunizations um, to help really prepare for you know, if, we, if we ever need to um, uh, if we ever need to do um, a response to, to, to something like that. Um, we also work with local with locals as well. Everything should be local in an emergency. And so um, there are lo local emergency managers at the public health side. Also, we have local emergency managers who plan for things like um, those wildfires and flooding um, and help uh, how we can either mitigate those, um, those risks or how we can even um, prevent them from ever happening. Awesome. It's Excellent. also really interesting in the public health preparedness realm um, how much coordination makes a huge difference and people don't always think about it. I think a good example was when Katrina hit in New Orleans. A lot of well-meaning people ran to go there to say, hey, we can help. You know, I have this skill, how can I help? But without somebody coordinating who's going where and where, getting the people that need the help and getting the people that can actually do the help um, is really important. Otherwise, you put more people into, into the risk of disaster. So public health preparedness is one telling, getting individuals to get ready to be prepared for whatever might happen. What are you gonna do within your house and stuff like that with mm -hmm. your kids, with your pets, those kind of things. And then there's things at the state level of saying, so what, what do we need to have ready at different levels that we could go in and help a community uh, that is working on the ground and coordinate, help coordinate the movement or working so that the police are being able to do their job, the medical folks can be doing their jobs, the cleanup people can be doing their jobs, and we're not getting it into each other's way and we're doing the best that's there for the community. And then the feds come in and help us with sure. that too. And they have more resources and they can fly in a plane with, uh, you know, one thing Matt does is our strategic national stockpile okay. of different yes. uh, medications and he can talk about that. But doing those type of aspects, it, it's gotta be open lines of communication. Communication usually is the downfall or the success of, of a response to almost every emergency. Excellent point. So Matt, do you wanna talk a little bit about the, the medication stockpiling and what, you know, while we're on that subject, that yeah. leads perfectly into that. So um, the federal, at the federal level, we have what's called the Strategic National Stockpile that is ran by um, the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response. And uh, what that stockpile is, is a cache of medic medications, also medical material for 
uh, for different types of events, mostly category A agents such as anthrax exposures, um, but it also has uh, medications for you know influenza. So um, our Tamiflu, there's Tamiflu caches. They also can supply vaccinations. So if we do have a pandemic of uh, influenza, they can help ramp up that um, that response by getting the state's uh, influenza vaccines, um, kind of similar to the H1N1 response when we needed to uh, vaccinate individuals because that strain was not actually um, put into that uh, that flu shot that year. So, good, excellent. All right, so. Um Maybe we could talk about some of the nat natural disasters that happened in the state. I mean, specifically one that's near and dear to our hearts here in Montana are wildfires. We obviously have had several seasons where that's been a huge issue. Um, and so, you know, in talking about how even that affects people's health, I know we only have maybe a minute or so left in this segment, but maybe we can talk a little bit about why wildfire sm smoke is harmful, how that kind of fits into things. Greg, maybe you can talk sure. a little bit about that. Well, I think, you know, wildfires, there's two different ways of thinking of it. There's probably lots of different ways, but one is the direct effect of, you know, do you need to evacuate, get out of your yes. house? Is there going to be damage here, direct uh, risk to the fires? And then there's the smoke in the air that mm -hmm. we've, I think, all in Montanans have dealt with in the last few years and what kind of effect that will have on you. And so there's different ways that one, we can prepare. Um, some of it is if you know you have asthma or some respiratory diseases that you have the medications available. I think one of the challenging part is those people that have what we call intermittent asthma. They're just occasionally using their, their, uh, their inhalers and they're yeah. thinking, well, I'll just get that one, you know, and the next time I have a chance, you need to have backup. You need to have stuff that is, is there. For people that have heart disease or, or lung diseases, these are other areas that you can also have some challenges. And we can go into more detail um, as if you'd like to. That sounds great. Maybe we'll pause here for just a quick break and, and come back and, and hit on some of those topics again here shortly. So coming up next, how to handle health and safety concerns no matter the disaster or weather. We have more information and some very important tips for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back.